Hello Revit modelers, this is Kurt Egley with Synergist Engineering Design Solutions. A number of my colleagues have asked me about how to do dormers on a residential building and I thought I'd go ahead and add that into the tips and tricks on Synergist CAD. I'm using Revit Architecture today and you can see I've modeled up a quick Cape Cod and I've got one dormer done but I'm going to do another one for you as a part of this exercise. It's really pretty easy. There's only a couple of tricks to it. The most important of which is to just be careful which faces of the walls on the dormer you pick as you work. So let's go over to the roof plan. You can see right now that the three walls that I've drawn in pass right through the roof. You can see a little better there in shaded mode. And we're going to build a roof on top of that. I'll choose hidden line. Under the home tab, on the home ribbon, home tab, there's a roof by footprint choice, which is what we'll pick. And under the draw panel, you'll see there's the pick walls. And then you'll set the amount of overhang you want, I'd like 10 inches. And I'll start by defining slope by toggling that on. So I'll get a slope on that side. And you can see where the overhang is. The little dashed line comes up to indicate which side it's going to overhang on. And then I don't want a hip on that, I want a gable, so I say no defined slope on that end. And it has to be a closed boundary, so I use the line tool to go endpoint to endpoint and close up the roof. I'm going to change the slope of the roof to be a little more dramatic, so it's a 9 by 12 right now. I'm going to change that to a 12 by 12 to match the rest of my roof do that on the two slope sides of the roof. It doesn't particularly matter if the small dormer roof passes through the larger roof of the house, but it might be easier to work at it if you can see it all from the top side. So I'm using the press to drag, press and drag feature to drag it back past where those wall stubs come through the roof and then I will go ahead and choose a type for it. So I'm going to choose a 10 inch asphalt shingle. So rafter 10 inch, asphalt shingle, and then I'll say for the base level start at the second floor and then go to the top of your wall. Um, that probably is nine feet for you, something like that. And then finish with the green arrow. You might say yes at this point. I'm going to say no so that we can do this individually and you'll see that it doesn't fill in the walls clear up to the roof surface. We'll do that as an individual step. So here we are looking at the roof that we've created. So far it's highlighted so you see it in blue there. It's kind of a little stub of a roof if you will. But the important thing right now is that we can get at the roof easily from the top even in hidden line mode without having to go to wireframe and pick on that edge. Also, you can see a bit of a triangle underneath the gable end that we'll need to fill in in the subsequent step. Under the Modify tab, there's a Join Unjoin Roof. Don't get the Join button, which is a choice. It's Join Unjoin Roof. You pick the trailing edge. It's got to be the one closest to your big section of roof. And then you pick the large section of roof. So that part is all done. Went easy enough. There's that opening yet that we want to fill in, so we'll do that with the next step. By attaching all three walls to the bottom of the roof. So we'll select those walls and the roof. And I'm going to go ahead and isolate them. Now you don't have to do this, but I'm saying isolate element. So I'll work so that you can just see a little bit better. We can go underneath it once to see the kind of changes that we're making to it. I'll turn that off again once I'm done with this editing, clear at the end of the clip. So select the three dormer walls. There's an attach top base. Make sure you got top, attach wall to the top, and then select your little section of roof. Now you can see that it filled in on that one end, and also if it was off by a fraction of an inch or something like that on the other two ends, you've got that filled up now as well. So there's that step. 
Looking underneath the roof though, you can see that the roof plane still floats right through our little pieces of wall. And over where I had done one already, there's actually a cut in the large roof plane. So we'll handle that next. I'm going to shift over, still in the 3D view, but shift over to the top and work on it. I like to work in this 3D view because then I can still orbit and make changes in that fashion. So actually underneath the home tab you'll find a dormer icon of under the opening panel. And you pick the big roof plane that you want to cut. Got to make sure that roof, pick roof wall edges is highlighted. And then now we'll start to pick around on it. Now you can't go wrong on the back side, but you can go wrong on the front side. So if you pick on these walls, you can see that it's dropping in a little pink line there. A little bit around. If you can't get the roof or the edge of the wall properly, at this point you could get underneath it if you want. See how I can get two different surfaces of the wall there? I picked the wrong one just to let you know how we can decide after the fact whether we got the right ones. So I've got four selected. I'm going to hit my modify button. That one I can't go wrong on, but if you hit the little flip arrows, you see how outside of the wall, inside of the wall, you really need the inside of the wall at this point. Pick it. Now I got the inside of the wall. And this one, sometimes I have to orbit just a little bit to get at my pick arrows and flip arrows a little bit better. Now I got the three inside surfaces to that. And that's one I'll want to fill it up. Again, it needs to be a nice clean boundary edge. So we'll use the trim extend to corner. You pick on the lines that you want to save, not on the trailing pieces out at the end. As you can see, I'm picking on the inside where the rectangles come, the intersections come together. Once I got the nice boundary, I hit the finish. Can't really tell from here, but if we orbit underneath and look up inside, you'll see even though I still have the walls in there, I've now got a cutout. And if I had a window, we'd see the window through that as well. So you could be done at this point, frankly, because we've got some walls done. we got a cut in there. Um, if you look at a plan, I had an, another uh, second floor of a Cape Cod open. Just look at a sample plan. We're, we've been working in this area right here and real commonly in the bedroom that is up above. You'll see that the walls actually come around like that. Um, chances are you probably want to cut that out though because uh, you see the material that's on it, for example. Um, if it's if it's like that, you're going to get the wood shakes. Granted, it's inside the crawl space probably, but still, let's trim that up to the bottom side of the large roof plane. So to do that, we do again attach top bottom, but attach wall base is what we're looking for this time. And now we select on the large roof plane and it cuts it up inside. And basically we live happily ever after at this point. <laughs> I'll go ahead and release the temporary hide on that so that we can see what we've just cut out looking up into our building. So there you have it. Stay tuned for another tech tip from Synergist Engineering Design Solutions coming soon. Thanks.